Coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. It's small, it's cute, and... Uh, it was a concept that was probably ahead of its time. Then we have this great big old shining hunk of an Oldsmobile. It's almost so ugly, it, <laughs> it, it makes it beautiful. And when the Marcells sang Blue Moon, I'm guessing this isn't what they had in mind. It's really not that unusual looking a car for the, uh, the early 1920s, but I think the name is particularly engaging. Plus. Well, it's gonna be a painstaking process of disassembly. The restoration of the last Hemi gets underway. Chrysler's not the only one that ever had a Hemi engine. Details just ahead. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps. We're at RK Motors Restoration in Menor, Ohio. Thought we'd stop out and check in on the restoration of the last Hemi. That's coming up in just a little bit on the show. But first, let's head out to a show. I won't even call this a car show because it's the Piston Power Show. If it has a piston creating power, it's out here at the Piston Power Show. For instance, airplanes. But we're really just interested in the classic cars. Keith, if there's anything such as a forgotten muscle car, it might be yours, the <laughs> AMC Javelin. Because they were wonderful, they look great, and you just don't see too many of them even when they were out for the first go-round. Yeah, AMC was not the big popular seller as the, uh, you know, the GMs, the Fords, and the Mopars. So, yeah, they, um, they had their performance options, though. The AMX is, uh, is their performance version. The earlier years, the 68s, 69s, and 70s were two-seaters, and then 71 through 74 went to this body style, which uh, a lot of the AMC folks call them humpsters as a nickname because of the big hump fenders. Mm -hmm. But um, they uh, these have both front and rear seats in them. So. It's a great looking car. Thank you. Don't you Appreciate think? Appreciate it. What, what made you want to buy it? And where did you find it? I found this one on eBay about six years ago up in northern Minnesota. I'm the third owner. I've, I like the body styles and they're unique. And um, I just, I like the color, it's been repainted and, and so forth, and uh, it was a 15 hour drive up there to go get it in February, but- In February to Minnesota? In February. And Keith, him. you wanted a Javelin. Yes, yes, <laughs> and it's been great to own it. What's yeah. your favorite feature about the AMX? Actually, I like, AMC was known to mix uh, parts, off the shelf parts from different manufacturers. This has like Ford front suspension in it, uh, but it used GM steering, so you have a nice tight feel to it, but it handles really good. Uh, these, um, they, Mark Donahue road raced them back in the days, uh, in, in the late 60s and 70s. Uh, in fact, I autocrossed this a couple of weeks ago out of a good guys event did in you? Indianapolis, and I actually did pretty well with it nice. for stock. We drive it a lot. I guess I tell people we drive the wheels off of it. Uh, this summer alone, we've put over 4,000 miles. Uh, we've driven uh, most of Oklahoma and Kansas of Route 66 in it this year in nice. ice and some degree temperatures. So, but it attracts a crowd no matter where you go. Gas, just getting gas can take 15, 20 minutes. Uh, my wife was telling me that she read an article that these were considered pony cars because they were going after the Mustang's mm -hmm. popularity. And this has some Mustang body lines to it. You, and if you look down the side of it, especially in the C-pillar. Well, I'm sure the AMC folks appreciate the fact that you're keeping it alive. I appreciate that too. And it's been fun. It's drawn a lot of attention here today. Tom, a lady just walked by and she said, wow, wow, wow. Wow, I counted them. There were four wows, and she was looking at your station wagon. She loved the chrome, she loved the ornamentation on this car, and I'll bet you get that all the time. Everywhere I go. I try to go to four or five different areas and states and car shows, and uh, everybody just, <laughs> they remember them, and it just brings back memories they, they've forgotten. The beautiful thing about this one to me, not just the way it looks, but the fact that it's pretty darn close to original. Yep, most of the stuff, uh, areas have been painted. 
on the lower spot. I put a few modifications on it that was original accessories for my own personal thing. That's what I wanted with the vehicle, but uh, I had to fix a lot of things on it mechanically. I cleaned it up and it come out like this. Beautiful car and at first I was going to tear it all apart and do a bunch of things. But I, the more and more I stared at it, and I says, I have to leave this alone. I got to keep it to it. What was GM thinking with this design, Tom? Okay. Harley Earl. Yep. He says, chrome. If you can't paint it, chrome it. I want more chrome on cars that you can ever put on. And this here is the king of chrome. For the 58s. Oh, yeah. This <laughs> got more chrome. If it was stacked as high as a chrome, it would end to end, it would be higher than the Empire State Building. <laughs> That's its claims Where did fame. you come up with that one? It was in 1973 <laughs> or 4 Hot Rod Magazine. Oh my goodness, that's funny. This car was originally from Texas. What's the radio on top of the car? Okay, this was the first year they came out with the transportable radio. They had three radio options. You had a regular radio with push button. That was called the Deluxe. And then they had a Wonder Bar Super Deluxe radio that you pushed a button and it would go to the next strong station. And then they came out with a radio that you could pull out, had its own battery pack. And if you bought the antenna, which you can see up there, yep. And you could go to the beach, and that was one, and it's called a transportable radio. Wow. I well, think they also did it in Pontiac and stuff. So. It's a station wagon. It has more chrome than anything I've ever seen before, yeah. and it's pretty darn close to original. It's very impressive, Tom. Very nice. It's almost so ugly, it, <laughs> it, it makes it beautiful. <laughs> you and know, what, I didn't want to... What wanna, were they thinking back then? Tom, I didn't want to go there, but you're right. That's kind of what it is, you know? And I love the hard top on the doors as well. You know, there's no post there. That was a unique option. And they did make it in a post sedan too. But well, I don't know the numbers, but I only think there was 2,000 of these made. But what's out there, usually a wagon got destroyed. It's just a, keep it on the road, will you? Oh, that's my love. I love it. My desire is to take this all around the country when I retire and just back roads and meet people and talk with them and enjoy it. Kids sure learn an awful lot from their parents. And my father had always told me about the moon. But dad was no astronomer. We shoot the moon next, so to speak, on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Handling classic and high performance vehicles requires an industry leading team of experts. Welcome to RK Motors Charlotte. Industry leading means meticulous attention to detail when servicing every vehicle. It means a consignment service so fine-tuned that a successful sale at maximum value is all but guaranteed. And a rigorous inspection on every vehicle before its tires even touch our sales floor. It's all this and more that make RK Motors Charlotte the industry leader. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Bill, you're driving the pride of Cincinnati. I am indeed. A Crosley. A Crosley. How about that? I love it. I know Paul Crosby wanted to make a car for every guy, an economical car, and in the 1940s, that was a kind of an interesting concept. Yes, uh, it was a concept that was probably ahead of its time. Uh, after the war, gas was uh, fairly inexpensive. Consequently, people wanted uh, larger cars with tail fins and bigger engines, so uh, this concept, unfortunately, didn't last very long. Six years from 1946 to 1952. Well, if they were giving an award for the cutest, smallest car here at the Piston Power Show, I think you'd win. That seems to be the optimum word for this car is, is cute. Everybody seems to like it. And uh, quite frankly, people that aren't really car enthusiasts, like children and, and uh, other people that aren't real car people, seem to be attracted to this car. Now, what features does this car have? Because part of Crosley's thinking was, keep it bare bones, keep it economical. Yeah, actually the engine is quite unique. It's a, an engine that was designed uh, for World War II generator sets. Uh, it's a very economical engine. Uh, it's called a, uh, a monoblock where it doesn't have a head. Everything, all the parts and everything come out through the bottom. So it's quite a unique design. Overhead cam, overhead valve, it only has 26 and a half horsepower. So again, it's quite economical. 
Horsepower is uh, overrated, right? Yeah, that's right. It certainly <laughs> is in this case. <laughs> so are cylinders, how many? It's got four cylinders. That's all you need. Yeah, that's right. It's about 44 cubic inches, which works out to be about 750 cc's. So it's, uh, again, not a very big engine, but there are ways you can uh, mess with gear ratios to be able to get up and make it go down the road. The interesting thing to me, when you look inside, there's a lot of room inside yeah. this car. Yeah, actually, the, the, the doors are quite wide. A, a big guy like me is able to get in and out quite easily. My dad is six foot four, weighs about uh, about 250, and he, he can get in and out of the car pretty easily himself. So. And plenty of leg room. Yes, yes, yeah, it was, it was quite, uh, quite well designed. Unfortunately, it, it was kind of ahead of its time mechanically, so uh, it just didn't work out. How did this come to be yours, Bill? I had a customer of mine in Valley View um, that I saw it in his shed, and he said, I told him that if he ever wanted to get rid of it, to give me a call. And about a year or so later, he called me and said, uh, come down, take a look at it, and make me an offer. And we made a deal, and I've had it about eight years now. Now, Crosley's didn't last very long, as you said. 1946 to 52, the peak year was this year, 1948. They had, they made about 23,000 station wagons, and that was, that was the peak. And, uh, after that, the bell curve kind of went the other way, and by 52, they were they were pretty much out of business. How often do you see another one, Bill? You'd be surprised. There's still quite a few of them around. There's an annual meeting or uh, an annual convention uh, in Wauseon, Ohio, every year, and there's usually several hundred cars that'll, that'll meet up there uh, in Wauseon in the springtime. Uh, but you'd be surprised. Uh, you talk to people at, a, at a, in a, an event like this, and they, they'll say that uh, I have one in my barn or I've got an engine in my barn, so yeah. you'd be surprised. It's, there's quite a few of still around. Have you done anything drastic to it? No, it's pretty much it's pretty much stock. I Probably the most drastic thing I did was change the wheels. These are just trailer wheels that I've, I purchased from a local hardware store. It happened to be the bolt, the bolt pattern was <laughs> the same. Who'd thunk it, huh? Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's, uh, it's got some minor little things like the headlight shield covers, but it's, it's pretty much the way it came from the factory. Well, it's real cute, Bill. Well, thank you. That, and I like it very much. Again, that's the optimal word, it's cute. <laughs> Tom, I came walking through. I saw a crescent moon as a hood ornament. I looked, and it's a moon, and I've never heard of, seen anything about a moon other than the one in the sky, and you own one. Well, it's a, it's a long story, but uh, my grandfather owned the moon in the 1920s. And my father had always told me about the moon and about... You didn't see it when you were I had never seen it. I don't even know if my father had ever seen it because the, the car met its demise in the 1920s. But uh, I was going about 40 years ago, I was going through a box of things at the shop and came up with a hood ornament. And I asked, immediately knew that it was the moon because of the family stories. And uh, about three years ago, uh, I saw this car came up at auction in New York State and uh, I immediately knew what it was because I had done some research on the moon in the, in the ensuing years. So uh, I just joke with everyone tell them it took me all these years to find the rest of the hood ornament. <laughs> is that the hood ornament? That is the hood ornament that was on my grandfather's car. Oh, that's fabulous. Where is the moon from? Give us some uh, history. The moon was built in St. Louis, Missouri uh, from 1905 till 1929. Uh, originally, uh, Joseph Moon built uh, carriages and when the automobile became popular in the early 20th century, he decided to move into automobiles. Uh, they built a, cars for a long time, but they never built a lot of cars. I've always been attracted to the disc wheels. They, uh, they, they look for the streamlined look in the 1920s. If you notice, there's not even a, uh, a tire valve on it. The tire valve they put on the inside of the tire, and I think it was just for a nice clean look. Uh, the early 20s moons had very nice interiors. Uh, they had a lot of wooden paneling in the back, and you can see the little drop-down bar on the back seat. Uh, it had, had a lot of nice features for a mid-range car. It was not an inexpensive car, but it was still cheaper than a Cadillac. Tom, what kind of a reaction do you get from people when they walk by and they see a crescent moon as a hood ornament and then see moon across the front of the car? Well, a lot like your reaction is they, they've never heard of a moon before. And there's, I think there's something engaging about the name Moon to begin with that seems to keep people's imaginations going. Uh, we've been at car shows before and you couldn't believe how many people come up just to take a picture of the, the name plate on the radiator and, and the hood ornament. And it's really not that unusual looking a car for the, uh, the early 1920s, but I think the name is particularly engaging. Are there a lot of moons still around? 
in March, uh, we started the Moon Car Club in St. Louis. There are a couple of fellows in St. Louis that uh, got all the moon owners that he could find together. And we all met, went there in March and uh, started this club. And since then, we've got about 120 cars that have been located uh, all over the world. Uh, moon exported uh, cars uh, to South America, and there's some ended up even on Australia. Wow. Have you had to do much to this car, Tom? Not a whole lot. Uh, I bought it from an estate, uh, but it hadn't been driven in a long, long time. So when I, I bought it at auction and kind of as a, as a pig in a poke, I didn't know whether it would run or anything mechanically, what kind of shape it was in. But I uh, took it back to my garage and uh, took the engine apart, cleaned it all out, took everything apart I could that needed lubrication and adjustment and so on before I even tried starting it. Uh, and when finally the day came that I started it, it did start right up and, and, and runs well. Well, Tom, I thank you for bringing this out because I'd never seen one before and, and dare I say, at the risk of being corny, you're the man with the moon. Well, thank you. I'd <laughs> be the first in your neighborhood. <laughs> Coming up. We took apart piece by piece, started bagging everything, labeled everything. The restoration of the last Hemi is next on Cruise In. Presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Sally, Tina, Betsy, you've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value. And we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte. And now we'd like to get to know Betsy at least for a little while, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. From start to finish, it's the restoration of the last Hemi. We probably should have lowered this thing down just a little bit. So it wouldn't be so high? So it wouldn't be so high. It's an important part of automotive history. I should have thought about it. Well, I can reach it. I'm just concerned about you. The last Hemi to ever roll off an assembly line. Joe Angelucci's 1971 Dodge Charger RT. When you want to do side by side? I think we first, first, first we'll uh, lower one side to get rear end up. Step one in the restoration of the last Hemi, just like step one in the restoration of any vehicle. Take it apart. And when we uh, started the disassembly process of the car. We spent a couple days prior, parts that we knew were a little rusty, a little too crusty, we saturated with some penetrating oil. You know, really soaked down a lot of the stuff. If a nut started getting stuck, tightening it back up, it kind of relieves the threads. And as they get going, as that rust builds up in the threads, a lot of times it creates heat, they kind of almost weld together and then you snap things off. We were real good about going back and forth on some of the nuts. I think through the whole process of the car, we may have broke two bolts, if that. Hey, can you show us how it works? Can I work before you go? Thanks. We took it apart piece by piece, started bagging everything, labeled everything. We tried to take pictures of every square inch of the car to the point where if you forget, let's face it, this car is going to be apart for a long time. Between pictures, bagging, and everything, it, 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 was a, it was a pretty good process, but we took our time with it too, you know, to make sure everything went well. A lot of the rare parts that we were worried about, you know, um, the grabber set up on the hood, that was a big deal. Uh, making sure none of the studs broke off the hood, broke off the grabber setup, because again, kind of rare parts, hard to find. So, you know, we were very, very intricate, very delicately taking things apart. So, it went well. For more on the restoration of The Last Hemi, visit our website at thelasthemi.com. When it comes to restoring or servicing your classic or high-performance car, expertise is the name of the game. 
and that's precisely what you'll find at RK Motors. You'll find our expertise in the attention to detail that can only be acquired through years of working on world-class builds. You'll also find our expertise in the RKM Performance Center, where we've assembled a team of highly qualified ASC certified mechanics. When expertise is the name of the game, trust the experts at RK Motors. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to the Piston Power Show on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Mike, I have to be honest with you. We usually don't talk to guys who own Mustangs. Okay. Because our theory is you see a lot of Mustangs. That's right. You don't see a lot of these. No. Tell me why. This is one of the rarest, it is the rarest Mustang ever produced. It's a 69 Boss 429 in the Boss 429 family. There was only, between 1970 and 69, there was 1,358 of those produced. This car here, a 69, was one of 859 produced. 859? 859. And why did Ford limit the production? It was only made to satisfy NASCAR rules. When Ford seen Chrysler clean it up in NASCAR, they had to come out with something. They came out with a Boss 429, which turned out to be their shotgun motor. And they had to sell a minimum of 500 to satisfy NASCAR rules. Originally in 69, they only wanted to sell 500, but there was such dealer demand and customer support, they actually added on the extra cars to support the sales for to satisfy NASCAR. How did this come to be yours? This was actually, we bought in a box of parts. The car itself is really Genie uh, S Code 390 car. When we ended up picking up the car, we ended up picking it up in pieces. We've had it now for three and a half years. You and your friends do yes. this work. We, we actually have myself, my buddy Earl Scott, John Vitto, my brother Joe Vitalis. It's just the four of us. We don't specialize. We've been doing cars for many a year. Mr. Scott talked me into buying an old car about 10 years ago. Nice. We started with a 69 Mach 1. It evolved into this mess. <laughs> and this whole mess ended up being, we ended up getting probably one of the best cars around, a Boss 429 Mustang. How was the process in putting this together, knowing that it was such a rare car? Being such a rare car, it was a basket case. We're actually starting not with an original Boss 429. We actually had the parts, the engine, the transmission, pieces, parts to make a Boss 429, but we had no clue on how to do it. We ended up meeting a guy at a show in, at the Ford plant, a guy by the name of Joe Flowers. He let us crawl all over his car, and it is exactly 100% correct to what it should be. What do you have sitting over by the uh, driver's side wheel over there? driver's side wheel that is a cylinder head from the car we have a problem here we have a lot of people that come here to the different car shows and different things do not believe it's an actual thing tell us it's a Chrysler it's like no Ford made a Hemi and if people don't realize what's what's going on we try to educate them saying here's the head this is a true Ford Hemi and Chrysler's not the only one that ever had a Hemi engine and it's an actual Ford motor which is very hard to convince well if I if you don't mind me saying you guys do good work, and, and nice job keeping something that's very rare on the road and looking good. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. How about that? A Mustang Boss 429 and a 1920 Moon. Honestly, I've never even heard of a Moon before. I did research in the books, never even found it. Absolutely great to see one in person, along with the 48 Crosley. Great variety of stuff out of the Piston Power Show. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.